earlier, Dave texts me in, in, in the group chat and goes, oh, happy birthday, you old motherfucker. Just so you know, it's all downhill from here. And I was like, oh, man, I don't know. I feel like things are going to be going good. And Dante said, I agree with Dave, but yeah, happy birthday. <laughs> I was like, it's the truth, though. Nothing it is happens true. after 30. It is I'm, true. I'm excited. I think it's going to be good. But either way, fucking cheers to another week. Let's go into our pick of the week with the heavy hours. All right, ladies and gentlemen, for our pick of the week this week, I got this sent to me like earlier this week, and it blew my fucking mind. We have the boys from the heavy hours on. Gentlemen, how the fuck are we today? Great. Great. So good. So good. Oh my God. We were talking before we started the interview, and I said, we've had so many goddamn Ohio bands on here, and I don't understand why. What is it about Ohio that's bringing all these great bands out? Is there a reason, or is there a rationale behind this, or is it just like a lucky streak? I have no idea. Um, it's a massive car- cabal behind everything. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing better to do. Here. Yeah, maybe that's the thing. Like, oh, Ohio's maybe it's boring, so we have to find you know ways to try to get out. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love the idea that you're like, yeah, it kind of sucks here, so we have nothing better to do than, but to make music. Oh yeah, but we a- do. Yeah, we do love Cincinnati though. We aren't going to bash on that. The Republic yeah. of Cincinnati. Yeah. No, are you guys? Love- are you guys Skyline Chili guys? Be honest with me. Hell yes. Oh, straight up. Are you true not? True. No, I am. I am 100%. <laughs> Good. We had our first experience. We were, we were playing a festival in Kentucky, like 2019, and we were driving through, and we saw a Skyline Chili when we were driving through Cincinnati, and we actually, like, fucking skirted off the highway, and we had to get it. <laughs> and it, I don't know if it's ever a good idea, but it's fucking oh. delicious. I enjoyed it. It's yeah. a terrible so idea. Right? I actually had a revelation today about Skyline Chili. I was eating both skyline chili and uh indian food chicken tikka masala and i think <laughs> i think i think the both are very similar in flavor profile actually yeah, i think they both do something similar to your stomach as well as <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes maybe that's it yeah, yeah we're gonna be in the middle of the interview and he's gonna be talking he's gonna be like yeah and honestly the record was all right i'll be right back <laughs> so all right so we, we we've, we've gotten the jokes out but uh, you guys have a new ep called wildfire out you guys just basically started putting music out this year. How the fuck did this come about? Uh, how did we start putting? Uh, I don't know. I mean, we recorded we recorded these songs not too long ago. When like twenty, I guess right before the pandemic got bad, twenty nineteen. And uh, yeah, that sort of effed up our release schedule. So uh, we've just been sort of flying by the seat of our pants up until now, and it's. I think it's time to start getting music out. We got this EP out. There's an album coming out in uh, January that we're stoked about. We're just kind of ready to get this music out. I mean, personally, the one thing I really took away from the EP was it's refreshing to hear a bunch of dudes not trying to be anybody else because we're really in this fucking landscape right now where we talk about it on the podcast all the time. It always, it sounds like there's like a, I don't know, like a focus group behind everything that everybody does. And what I, what I really liked about the EP and especially the song Don't Walk Away that we're going to play, I was like, it doesn't feel like there's anything being forced here. It just feels great. I mean, and I, yeah. in everything that I've done research leading up to this, you guys work with some fucking heavy hitters to make this record. Who was behind this? Who'd you guys write with? Who'd you work with? Go ahead and drop some names. Let's go. Oh, man. Both, yeah, and you saying there's a focus group behind it, there definitely wasn't a focus group behind our record, but there definitely was a cast of the craziest characters. You know, a focus group might have been a little uh, a little more tame. But uh, <laughs> number one, Dan Auerbach was, uh, we co-wrote with him. Um, you guys want to speak to him? Yeah, other? well, Dan, we co-wrote with Dan, but Dan would bring in some of his friends, which his friends are like 95-year-old dudes who played on like Elvis records. Yeah. And so... <laughs> Did you guys cut this in the Nashville studio down there? We no. didn't, but we, we, we hung out with him and wrote in the Nashville studio. And so we were there for like a week, just hanging out in that studio every day. And it was a wild place. It was crazy. Dude, I love watching the behind the scenes videos from there. Like I know Rolling Stone did a little behind the scenes of Dan yeah. back's Nashville studio. Yeah. And it literally looks like an old VFW hall with like the characters that walk in. It's just yeah. like, but they're great session musicians. You can't beat that. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. Un- unbelievable musicians. And there's like a random like 14 year old there named Mickey who like is great at saxophone or something. He's like a prodigy <laughs> or something. Like uh, Dan's growing him in a lab. Yeah. Yeah. I was just gonna say, like, I don't think you go to a Dan Auerbach related studio and don't expect some weird shit to happen. 
<laughs> but what came out of it was amazing. So you had Dan Auerbach. Who else did you guys work with? Um, and then after Dan, we got to meet and became really awesome friends with who ended up becoming our producer. That was Simon Felice and David Barron. And Simon was in the Felice Brothers, who's the drummer. Um, but he's also been the producer for the Lumineers past three or four albums. Um, he's worked with just a lot of really cool people up in Woodstock, New York. And so we got in on that uh, on that circle. And yeah, Simon's one of our one of our best. Simon is best crazy. Guys we, during the last recording session, we had uh, like one day we walked in, we thought we were going to be recording our music, and our two producers, Simon and David. They were like, hey, real quick, can you guys lay down like a harmony and a guitar part for Shania Twain? We're like working on a single for her. <laughs> what? And I don't know what ever happened to that, but like that was just, you know, an experience that I never thought we'd have walking into a studio. <laughs> I don't know what happened with that. If someone asked me to do harmonies for Shania Twain, that's all I would think about all day, every day for the rest <laughs> of my fucking life. <laughs> Jesus. But no, it's funny because I had been listening to a lot of Felice Brothers and then listening back to the record now, it makes sense that that was what was behind it. That's fucking incredible. Like, how did, like, was this all chance meetings or was this set up by people? Like, how the fuck did you guys get in the room with these people? Yeah, we, we've asked ourselves that question a lot, yeah. too. It was, a, it was kind of like, yeah, this weird chance thing. We, me and AJ and John, we had written some songs and you know, had this like EP kind of like demos that we were sending around and um, just hoping somebody would, it would get in the lap of somebody important. And um, we ended up getting hooked up with an agent. And then after he was like, yeah, I like this stuff. Let me send it around. And he sent it around to people and they were like, yeah, this is cool. And next thing you know, we're like getting lunch with Dan and driving up the Woodstock. So it just kind of really happened was, organically. It really was just like our Dropbox of demos like bouncing around to random people and just phone call after phone call of like, hey, I like this shit. Like, can we meet up? And I think I think the coolest thing for you guys too is um, we had uh, David Basin, who is a big manager. He like found the strokes. He was on the podcast last week, wow. and he had, he was talking about being a manager today. You have to find artists who kind of know who they are, like. Like you have bands that are indie bands who for some reason want to be TikTok sensations. Then you have pop artists who want to tour and it's like, they don't fit. I feel like you guys have a very good grip on who you are, who you should be touring with the songs you should be writing. And you just got off the road with fucking galactic. Like yeah. what, what was that to, to tour with maybe one of the best live bands on earth? Like what was that run with galactic? Like oh, they were like our road parents. They like took yeah. us in and like, I, like they were seriously some of the nicest human beings we've ever met we hung out with them every show afterwards and they just like legitimately will have a bond with them for the rest of our lives yeah, yeah. And, and i think the cool thing about them or like the thing that we tried to do as a band was like just try to be you know sponges and just like soak up everything we can you know every piece of nugget of information and and just thing we can learn on stage from them and like there wasn't a better band in the world to to try to like learn from than these guys that have are actual like masters at their instruments and masters at live performance and like like stanton moore's might be one of the best drummers like of, i of was just gonna ever. ask you guys which one of you is the drummer which one of you guys plays drums uh, our drummer is in Nashville right now. He's not with us right now. Okay, uh, well, e either way, he must have just sat there the entire time just staring. Oh, they, were, they were texting, like, constantly, yes, all the time. They were like, having a – they formed a relationship, man. It was awesome. Oh, my God. Jesus Christ. Well, also, I, this is, like, an off – like, it has nothing to do with you guys, but who was the guest vocalist on the road with Galactic? Uh, I was going to say uh, Angelica Jelly Joseph. Uh, Jelly. And she, uh, she was so cool. She was – so chill, so down to earth. Um, and she would hang out with us after every show. Uh, she is an amazing entertainer and also a huge uh, part of our positive experience with them was their crew. Galactic has a crew that is just top notch and they're just a well-oiled machine, you know? And that's something that I think we all looked at and we were like, damn, someday we want to be a well-oiled machine like that. Dude, there's, no, there's nothing more jarring, like, Two weeks ago, we got to open up for Jane's Addiction, The Offspring, and Cheap Trick. Dude, that's awesome. And, that's we, amazing. and we fucking showed up with, like, our crew. Like, there was 10 people total with us. And then yeah. we watched the semi truck start backing up to unload everybody's <laughs> shit. And we have, like, a cart with, like, our fucking amps on it. And they're, like, it made me feel dumb, but also made me be, like, holy shit, there's so much more to learn. And, like, I guess, like, kind of my wrap-up question would be, like, 
what have you guys learned the most from being around Dan and Galactic and and so, like so, like like there's been so many people you can soak up from. You said your sponges. Like, what have you guys learned the most in the process so far? Mm, one thing that I've noticed about Dan and about Simon and about you know the guys that we look up to in this industry is you really get a sense that they have like a mission and a goal that they feel and they are just you know they're not ruthless they're not like you know chopping people's heads off but they are just like going towards that goal with confidence yeah, yeah. and they are like they're going to go there they're going to bring everybody with them they're in it they're just kind of like these weird crazy psychotic leaders <laughs> who are also like funny and just i don't know they're they're like true artists man, man you just described the shit out of me that's awesome yeah <laughs> <laughs> dude but that's the biggest thing that we try and convey on the fucking podcast is like to really make it if you want to say make it in music or entertainment whatever just in life you have to have this fucking wild optimism that like yeah i can do this shit and i mean like being in rooms with people like that like you have to have that or else you're never going to make it. Like you, you're never, and by make it, I mean like you're never going to like get where you want to be. Like that's yeah, such a yeah. fucking great thing to take away from it. But I mean, you guys obviously like you've been on the road, you're putting out music. What is next? I guess, you know, we're going to try to yeah get this album out in January and um, yeah. And just hop on more shows, you know, like shows are just starting now to kind of like have some rhythm and flow yes. to like tour and stuff again. So We've been like, you know, hopping on a tour for a week and doing some one-off shows. And like a couple weeks ago, we got to do a, a one-off show with Nathaniel Rateliff in Chicago, which was awesome. What? Where was it? It was the Gallagher, Gallagher Way. Yeah, right outside of Wrigley. Dude, you sh- I wish I would have known that ahead of time because fucking White Sox Dave literally would have been there. Like, <laughs> I, it was I'm- a big show. It was yeah. sold out. But just, yeah, just trying to have some, hop on more shows and, Honestly, just play, play more in 2022. Get some more spins. Yo, hey, dude, and how many people ask you guys on a regular basis, like, oh, when's the next time you guys are going to be playing a show? And you just have to be like, nobody really knows what the fuck is going on. Yeah. 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 We, we have shows that are booked for December that I'm literally getting stuff back from the agent of the person who we're opening for being like, maybe? Like, we don't, yeah. we don't know. Yeah. Like, we have two days in December that it's just like, hold this. You know, that's all we know, you know. Yeah, uh, dude, either way, like, I'm really impressed with how much you guys have gotten done in such a short amount of time. I don't know, man. Fucking future is bright. Not to mention, yo, I, I just realized this. You guys did WXPN's Free at Noon in Philadelphia? Yeah. Yeah. That's our homies. Like, that's, I literally live, like, five minutes. To, I'm a Philly boy, so, like. Oh, hell yeah. Bruce Warren, who runs that station, is a very, very, very good friend of mine. I'm about to text him and be like, yo. Gonna spend, <laughs> gonna spend some more heavy hours what are we doing here <laughs> they are they are radio stations like that are, are so clutch to have in the country i mean triple a baby triple a yeah. radio gotta yeah. love it but all right so we're gonna go into don't walk away is there anything else you guys like to say to the fucking hordes of people that are gonna be listening to this uh oh, after you're done listening to it listen to the whole ep listen to the whole wildfire ep go out and support live music <laughs> yeah. buy, buy tickets go to concert be safe about it Eat Skyline Chili. Mix yeah. it with Tikka Masala. Don't be a dickhead. And go Bengals. Don't be a dickhead. Go Bengals. <laughs> I love it, dude. Gentlemen, it's been fucking great to meet you guys. I'm, I think, honestly, we should get together and maybe do a show or two. I think it'd be fun. I think it'd be dude, a good time. That'd be awesome. Yes. We're always down. We fucking say no more. Ladies and gentlemen, go check out the Heavy Hours. This is their single, Don't Walk Away.